so this year we're going to talk a little bit uh, about applying machine learning to optimize real-time applications and services. The last time I spoke more about uh, statistics and how do you gather uh, data at scale. So <clears throat> there are lots of apps today, uh, including us, that are collecting a lot of data. And uh, this data comes from calls, typically. So uh, typically today, in an audio-video call, there are about 500 metrics being tracked. Uh, via the get stats API or some other APIs that you might be uh, pulling from, and that's per like whatever uh, measurement interval that you're using. So this might be every second, every five seconds, every 10 seconds. So there's about 500, or 500 odd data points coming in uh, <clears throat> from metrics every five, sec five, 10 seconds, and then the calls last anything from 30 seconds to one minute in call centers to uh, like conferencing calls where they might be like 30 to 60 minutes. And uh, <clears throat> depending on what type of product you build, you're doing like millions of sessions per hour. And uh, if you're anyone uh, in operations, running product, or you, if you're an engineer, you want to build, you want to figure out how do you optimize your platform, uh, the product's trying to figure out what features to release, and engineering is trying to build like better products for you. And uh, typically, when you have a lot of data, there are two things that you do. One, if you're an operational person, you like set up alerts and alarms so that you get w woken up in the middle of the night when things break. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> then the other part of it is you're collecting a lot of data, and you're actually uh, delving through that data. You're asking questions from it. You're creating hypotheses, and you're like trying to prove them right or wrong as humans. Right? So you have data science teams, or you have engineering, or your product, which is looking at that data and trying to figure out what's working. And if typically when you have issues related to like bad quality, uh, you, build, uh, you look at hypotheses, you look at user feedback coming in from your end users, and lastly, you're analyzing mountains of data to like find the root cause analysis uh, of, of that problem. And we've been doing this for a while, and for a, uh, for a fair bit of time, we've been publishing something called the WebRTC metrics report. And that was really easy initially because the a lot of people would ask us questions, and we would just publish them. We would just, like, people ask us questions. We look at the data. We'd say, like, hey, you know, things are going up to the right. Things are declining. Bad stuff is going away. Good stuff's happening. There's new codex coming in, so on and so forth. And then this year, or almost end of last year, what we were feeling, the pressure that we had to come up with new stuff. And it's really hard to come up with new stuff when you don't know what's happening. You're collecting a lot of data. We're collecting a lot of data over myriads of uh, applications and that's true for everyone like if you're like a snapchat or like house party or google hangouts you're collecting a lot of data and you're trying to figure out what's happening there and <clears throat> what happens is that if you're an operational person you're getting like hundreds of notifications and you're trying to classify them you're trying to figure out what's happening product has its own uh, dashboards the engineers have their other dashboards and everyone's trying to create hypotheses trying to figure out what they can improve uh, all the time for, uh, for the product and what we realized is that we actually ran out of ideas. Like, we could not ask any more questions. Every question we asked, it was like, oh, yeah, this is interesting, but not very interesting. And we kept looking for more and more things. And at a point, we said, like, hey, we don't know anything about it. Like, everything's interesting, but not. Like, we, we're not able to find the most interesting thing that we should be looking for. And uh, so what we did was we said, like, hey, we know all these metrics, and they, all these metrics behave in a certain way. So what if we told a system that these are these metrics in a call, and we summarize them. So the 500 metrics uh, become like thousands or 10,000 metrics because you have statistical measure for each metric. You have a percentile. You have uh, like 25 percentile, 50, 75, 95, 99 percentiles, and you can do that for everything. You can do it for RTTs. You can do it for that's round trip times, loss rates, uh, fractional loss rates. You can look at throughputs. You can basically collect it and aggregate it at the end of the call. So now you have mountains of data. And you're trying to create these hypotheses. And what we told the system was, like, go cluster them, right? Like, just figure out whatever is common. Like, <clears throat> and that's an interesting thing, because what we wanted out of it was more interesting notifications. We did not want to set an alarm on, like, hey, calls are failing. When the call failure rate re hits 2%, send me an alarm. Because you don't know why it's failing, right? Maybe the browser version changed, or you rolled out an app, and probably people already know, so the alarm's not very useful. Uh, and so we wanted to get to a point where the alarms would actually be much more insightful, where they would say, like, hey, this is happening because of this, 
and these are the other things that are being affected by this. So if your round trip time is going, it's reducing your object, like your quality of the end users in the call, and it's only happening in this region, for example, which is what is one of the alerts that we saw early in the middle of the year. And basically, you can do the same thing. So we're collecting data. We categorize this data into three parts, transport, device, and uh, platform and infrastructure. So in the case of network, you have ISPs, you have end user locations, you have network types. This may be Wi-Fi, 3G. Uh, you have then all the good stuff like round trip time, jitter, packet loss, frame rate, frame size, whatever you can think is useful from the media pipeline and the, uh, and the audio pipeline. And from the endpoint side, you have the devices, you have the operating system, you have uh, browsers, and you have CPU types, so, so that you can actually see uh, like a certain type of uh, device in the market, especially like uh, Android phones, which are low cost, which uh, you may be trying to do like really high performance uh, real-time communication on them. That might be the problem, which you may not be actually aware of. And then there are topologies. Are you doing peer-to-peer -peer or star, hub, spoke? And you might be doing all of them at once, and you want to like compare each of these. And basically, as I said, we have about 500 metrics, uh, which turns out to be like thousands of data points. So we took one service, and uh, basically we told it uh, <clears throat> in the beginning of the year, and this is one of the data points we got. So <clears throat> this is objective quality. This is our metric. One, between one and two, it's bad. Between two. Two to three, it's uh, OK, and above three is perfect, right? And basically, what we see is like we gave it all this data, it clustered it, and this is just a representation of it, right? So it's a multi dimensional model, so almost like 50 dimensions. You compress it, we're using PCA and TSNE there to comp uh, like bring this down to two dimensional for visualization. And what you see is like you see one group here and another group there, and you're, we're like, OK. So it figured out this is just data compressed, and it's already clustered them in two different areas. And what does that mean? So it said, like, uh, and the system said, hey, group five's quality is affected by network issues. We, it doesn't know what those things are. And then it says group four, it's also affected by network issues, but they're correlated to, the, to an ISP, which was compelling because it found two groups, and it separated them somewhat uh, to say that this was the case. And then we said, OK. Tell us more. And then as engineers, we said, like, now we need to investigate if the AI is actually correct, right? because we have no clue what it's telling us and why is it telling us that. So what we said is, OK, show us where group uh, 5 is. And it says group 5 is this brown, uh, which is encompassed by the, the blue, light blue cyan version of it. And then there's the purple, which is in the center, which is group 6. Uh, <clears throat> so we said, OK, so let's look at group 5. and. Uh, let's see if it's correct in telling us something. And so we looked at it, so we said, let's compare group, and f group five and six. Five is the brown one which had the problem, and six which was encompassing it around it in the visualization, which didn't have the uh, problem. So we said, okay, tell us. And it says like user five and six, uh, uh, users in group five and group six are actually of the same locations. So they have the same locations and the graphs to the, if I can get this too. Uh, this basically shows the lat and the lons, and they're roughly the same, similar. Uh, and we said, okay, tell us more. And then it says, okay, the servers are definitely in the right, uh, in the same places. You can see the server locations are also roughly the same graphs. So if the users are in the same place and the <coughs> the servers are in the same place, but it's in two separate groups, that's interesting observation that we did not notice or it noticed, which uh, told us. And then we said, okay, why do you think it's the network? And so we plotted all the network characteristics. And what we noticed is that in actually group five, the loss rates are much higher compared to uh, group six. So it's actually classified it separately uh, because it noticed that it has commonality, but actually the network parameters are different. So the loss is different. The throughputs are different. The throughputs are lower in this, and the losses are higher uh, in group five and uh, compared to six. So basically. In this case, we would say like it's maybe some kind of congestion control. And we said, OK, that's good. It's separated. Uh, it's able to identify people in the same geography using the same servers, uh, having different network behavior, and it's clustered them separately, which actually makes our life easier uh, to investigate. And then it also said like group uh, four had network issues, but it's correlated to an ISP, which I thought like was interesting, because it's actually found another feature uh, in addition to the one it had already found before 
And you can see that uh, from the visualization that the purple group is actually encumbered by the brown group, which is group five before in this case. And it's also separated uh, into another cluster. And uh, so we said, OK, show us the ISPs. And it actually did. Uh, <clears throat> and it listed all the ISPs that were causing this issue for, for these users. And uh, what we see here is, uh, so we created another metric, which is the representation metric. Uh, and we just put quality three to one. As I said, three is good, one is bad. And I marked all the ones uh, in, uh, in red. And the only place that uh, we noticed that the representation where it had put ISP, like the at and which has actually more high quality calls in the same group, uh, was the most interesting part that actually, as a group uh, in at and the, the number of calls having high, or high quality and low quality were quite similar. But just because the high quality scores were much higher uh, compared to the low quality scores, it kind of biased towards it. So there's some work that we need to do uh, by not just using numerical values, but use them as labels, because three has a bias towards a uh, larger number. Uh, <clears throat> so this is the first thing that we're rolling out. Uh, so this is now part of our product. Uh, I hope that the knowledge that we've imparted, people can actually uh, go out and experiment with this idea on their own. Or, and we hope that instead of uh, like getting alarms in the middle of the night, our AI-assisted hypotheses uh, notification system actually gives us more details in trying to solve particular problems uh, in operations spe specifically. And hopefully, uh, future versions of this are going to solve problems for product development and engineering. So that's my last slide. Open up for questions. <laughs>